You probably recall through the course of this pandemic, we've been looking at this screen at the data uh, about COVID-19 and a lot of it has been very depressing indeed. But I have some good news, which is that a lot of these charts we're about to show you, the higher the lines are, the better the news is because we're looking at vaccinations, the progress of vaccinations and also whether it's actually starting to have an effect. Uh, of course, a lot of focus in the UK really recently has been on this line, getting to kind of 15 million first dose uh, vaccinations by the 15th of February. Well, did we get there? Well, have a look at the line. This shows you Q cumulative first dose vaccinations and yes uh, it got above 15 million uh, on the 14th of February so 15.1 million and expected to continue climbing in the coming weeks. Let's compare the UK with other countries around the world. There's been a lot of talk of comparisons about the UK being much further ahead. Well it certainly is on one measure okay so just take that line. Now we're looking um, per hundred of the population so we can actually just compare it across countries. I'll come over here so you can see and I'm going to add on Europe, uh, various countries in Europe so you can see just the big difference between where the UK is uh, and the rest of Europe. This is total vaccinations. Uh, and you can see Spain, Italy, Germany, uh, France and the Netherlands. Just, just look at that gap. It really is striking uh, where they are versus the UK. Uh, and then add on a few other countries, for instance, the US, somewhere in the middle. In terms of total vaccinations, more than any other country, uh, but obviously per head of the population, and somewhere between those two groups there. Uh, and then other countries, for instance, Chile, big rise uh, in Chile in terms of vaccinations there. I should say, though, this is countries with uh, populations below 10 million, sorry, above 10 million. If we include countries that have populations that are slightly below there, we'll just have a look at this, OK? Have a look at where Israel and the UAE are. Look at those charts. It's really striking, isn't it? You can see just Israel way ahead of almost anyone else. And then you've got the United Arab, Arab, Arab Emirates just below it there uh, as well. I should say, though, these, these are kind of total vaccinations. And a lot of people have been wondering, you know, whether you've got first doses, you've got some countries which are insisting on going for kind of two doses uh, as quickly as possible, the UK delaying that second dose. So how, do the, how does it look if we look at fully vaccinated people, so people who have had two doses of those relevant vaccinations? It is actually a very different picture. So have a look at this. This is, again, uh, per 100 of the population. You've got Israel way ahead of anyone else there. The higher this is, the more people uh, have been fully vaccinated vaccinated. Uh, then you've got the US, then Spain, then Italy. So actually these European countries um, have vaccinated more people fully than the UK. That's not often appreciated that the UK, although it's kind of, it's really gone for that first dose thing and a lot of the medical evidence from WHO uh, to others suggests that is a, a sensible thing to do uh, in the circumstances. The UK uh, actually behind most other developed countries when it comes to fully vaccinated uh, people. Um, the, the real question, though, and I know that, you know, everyone has been focusing on this, a lot of people trying to look at the data to work out what uh, the impact is going to be, uh, is just trying to get that sense. So in Israel, you know, there does seem to be some evidence that now that vaccination programme is bearing down uh, on deaths. How about in the UK? Obviously, uh, moving slightly slower than Israel. Have we seen an impact when it comes to the change in deaths? This is a kind of back of an envelope effort. I'm going to show you something slightly more scientific in a moment. But what we can do is just look at the change uh, in deaths since the peak. That happened, uh, obviously, uh, we've got two peaks here. We've got the first peak, uh, the first wave peak, and that's how fast deaths came down back in the spring. And um, the, the interesting exercise is to compare the shape of what we're going through now at the moment. Is the curve going to come down quicker or slower than last time around? If it comes down quicker, it might be a sign. There are lots of other things going on as well, I should say, but it might be a sign uh, that that vaccination program is having an impact. And here's what we see. So coming down at more or less the same speed, but it does seem to have accelerated in the last week or so. So if that continues to accelerate, maybe that's a sign uh, that the vaccination uh, program might be bearing down on deaths. But like I say, really, a more scientific way uh, of looking at this is to look at age groups in particular. And one way of doing that is looking at case fatality uh, rates. Now, the case fatality rate is the percentage of people uh, who die for any given case. And you can kind of break it down by age groups. So clearly, uh, those who are younger, so you've got 50 uh, to 60 and so on, those who are younger are less likely to die of this uh, virus. Whereas you can see the older age groups, you've got much higher levels. So back in the kind of early point of January, so when, when they was at their maximum in this wave, you can see that you're kind of getting almost towards 50% case fatality rates in those uh, aged between 90 and kind of 120, so 90 max. What we can do, and this is a really, I think, a really interesting exercise that's been carried out by the Centre for Evidence-Based Medicine uh, at Oxford. What we can do is specifically look at those older age groups who have mostly got the vaccination now, so 80 plus, so I've highlighted them there. 
and just have a look and see whether they have changed from that point, max in January, uh, early January, to where we are now. This is where we are now. It's pretty striking, isn't it? I'm going to show you that one more time. We'll just go back. So early January, and look at the, just look in particular at those 80 plus uh, age groups there and compare them with the other age groups. Everyone's down a bit, but just look how much further those 80 plus age groups have come in comparison uh, with everyone else. Uh, another way, let me show you another way of kind of looking at this, just two simple bars, just to give, make that point. And here we're just looking at the change in the case fatality rates uh, since that maximum point. So that the further down it is, the better news that is, because that's fewer people dying. Uh, and you can see under 80s, case fatality rate down by 5%, over 80s down by 35%. So this is tentative news, but it is good news. It suggests that there is an outsized impact on case fatality rates recently, which is very, it's, it's probable, no one knows for sure, but it's probable or plausible that that could be down to the vaccinations. Uh, and I'll just show you one other way of looking at, uh, which is to look just at a, a chart. And so this is the point where vaccinations began. You've got under 80s and over 80s. So under 80s, that black line, and they were more or less correlated. They're on different scales at the moment, obviously, because you are much less likely to die uh, if you are younger and get the disease. But it's the shape of these that we're looking at. And the key thing is the way that they have diverged in the last few weeks. And that divergence has continued to the extent that the gap between them is bigger than it's ever been. So the gap potentially in you, you know, your likelihood of dying as a result of this disease uh, when you're over 80 uh, versus when you're under 80, that's diverged more than ever before. So this is really promising news. But of course, you know, we have to wait and see what this data shows us in the next uh, few weeks. There's a few other things that I want to just kind of talk about finally. We're still, we don't have all the data we would really like. I talked a bit earlier on about how we've kind of got beyond that 15 million point. Well, let's not forget, the government was talking not about 15, 15 million vaccinations uh, administered, but 15 million vaccinations offered to those in those categories who most needed them. What we don't have is detailed data about how many vaccines have actually been offered. So we don't know how many have been offered in total. It's more than that, clearly, uh, but we don't know how many. It would be nice to know about that. It would be nice, too, to know about which vaccinations have been given. So, you know, you'll be kind of well aware that we have various different types of vaccines that have been ordered by the UK government. So you've got all the way from Moderna, 17 million of those, those Janssen, Pfizer, BioNTech, that first one, 40 million of those, and then other vaccines which haven't yet uh, been approved, all the way through to this Oxford, AstraZeneca, the majority of them. We know how many have been ordered, and there you can see those numbers. What we don't know is who is getting them. And it would be useful to know that. And we don't, you know, some, we get some of that data from Scotland, but we don't have all of that for the UK. So there's still some big gaps when it comes to what we know about this uh, vaccination programme in terms of the data. But broadly speaking, as I say, there's been so much bad news we've had to show you on this screen. It's nice to show you some good news. And hopefully those trends will continue. We'll bring you up to date with them uh, as those lines come, uh, come out, as we get more data on the case fatality rates, and as we find out whether this vaccination programme is indeed starting to work.